Hi guys, Madhav Mahajan keeps asking me questions about connecting wires to vibrating toothbrush motors. Now there's several different types of vibrating toothbrushes. I've got two examples here. This one's called an Oral-B Pulsar and it has a small motor in it that looks like this. Well, without the bit of plastic on it, but it looks like that. I don't know if the camera will focus on it. The colours all seem to be funny now. That's because I'm using that green background. Anyway, that's the motor out of the Oral-B Pulsar. You can also get motors like this from pager vibrators. That's what you usually see them referred to as. This one, which I like a lot because it's cheap, can cost me under a pound, and I believe you can get them in America in the dollar stores. Um, oh, these are about six or seven pounds, so they're quite expensive. Right, back to these. I'm not going to take this one apart, I want to leave it in the package for a later project. But here's one I've taken apart earlier. It's actually got a switch on the bottom of it, which is very handy. Battery. And if you reach your finger inside, you can actually pull out the whole motor and battery assembly. Now, let's see if we can get close up again. This is the contact that goes to the switch and the other end of the battery and that just hooks off the motor contact and this, this spring makes the contact with the other end of the battery and that just hooks on the other contact just there. So that's your two contacts that you would normally connect your wires to. In fact I've got battery holder here with a couple of wires sticking out. So I'll just connect them on there. There you go. Motor's running. This particular motor I've already put a blob of hot glue on the end. They don't come like that. Normally they have this weight where you see the hole in the weight is offset to one side and that's why they vibrate. That would normally be fitting on the end there. And I've done a video on how to take that weight off so I'll put a link to my help file on how to do that. So that's the easy motor. It's the cheap one and it's the one I use quite a lot. Back to this one, which as I say they're quite expensive. Um, but once they're worn out, you can't replace the brush on them or anything, so you have to throw them away. In these, you undo the end. Again, I've done a video already on how to do this. You need a good pair of pliers. Get hold of that metal there. I'll probably knock the camera over when I do this, but you give it a good hard pull. And the whole unit comes out. That's the motor on the end, and you see that's got a, an offset weight on it again to make it vibrate. That's one of the wires soldered onto that metal plate that goes to the back of the battery. And the, This is actually the switch, this little bit of plastic that goes up and down. All it does is it pushes the battery away from the other contact. And if I just flick it up out of the way, hopefully you can see the blue wire coming out of the back of the motor and that's soldered onto that other metal plate. So if you want to use this motor, it's best to desolder those wires there so that you've got the maximum length of wire possible. In fact, quite often I cut up this metal plate 
and use the metal plate to make contact with the battery. I did that in this one. So that's the motor from the end of there. These metal plates are these metal plates cut up. One of them is touching the back of that button cell and if I push the other one in it touches the front and makes contact. Now, if you're not careful and you just pull that, the wires won't come off the solder there, they'll pull straight out of the motor. Let's just bring that in closer again. So if you just get hold of this and pull it hard, the wires snap off inside the motor. They won't come off the solder. There's an example of one that I did that to. There's no easy way of getting that motor apart and replacing that wire. So basically, might as well throw this in the bin. It's no use whatsoever. The other thing is getting the weight off the end of the shaft there. That little weight. And again, I've done a help file on how to do it. So I'll put that in the video description, how to get to it. What you don't do is just try and pull it. Because if you pull it too hard, you'll end up with a motor that looks like this. You've saved the wires, but you've lost the shaft out the middle of the motor. Again, I'm speaking from experience here, because I've done it. And the camera's not focusing, is it? Let's see if we can get over there a bit. So, that one might as well go in the bin as well. That's no use to you. So you have to be careful with these. These are quite delicate. So if it's got no wires on it, or it's only got one wire, throw it in the bin. You're wasting your time. If you've got it out right, and you've still got the wires on the end of it, then you can extend these wires by soldering onto them there. I just connect my battery to it. So here's an example of one that I've extended the wires so they're longer. So that's what you do. You extend those wires carefully and I usually put some hot glue or something fairly close by to stop any pull on the little wires. I usually glue the wires in place so that you're pulling the big wires, not pulling the small wires out of the motor. Well I hope that covers it. There are, there are other types of vibrating toothbrushes with different types of motors, but those are the main two that I use.